Hey guys, Adam Rose, Vice President and Senior Law Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. And this is another episode of the Mortgage Guy podcast. And it is another market update and some differentiating between pre-qualification and pre-approval, uh, what you need to know and some things that can impact you. So first thing I want to talk about is uh, VA. So that we got some announcements from VA that they are doing their best in this market to uh, make sure veterans are staying in their homes. You know, everybody's going through some tough times right now. We're moving into a uh, technical recession and uh, job, jobless claims are, are up, of course, and that's impacting some people. So VA uh, announced the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs has asked mortgage servicers to halt foreclosures on veterans through May of 2024, meaning just pause it. Stop what you're doing. Uh, this six-month pause will give the government time to roll out a brand new program uh, that the White House did announce in October. Well done. That's one good thing that the White House has done so far. That will help veterans who are behind on their mortgage payments but do not qualify for traditional home retention options. And so what they mean by home retention options is usually there are uh, forbearances, there are uh, interest-only payments for a period of time. Sometimes the loan servicer is going to work with you to stay in the home. Well, VA is rolling out their own program uh, to keep those veterans in those homes. So that is fantastic news. Um, and uh, I hope everybody that is going through that right now can get the help that they need and, and stay in their home, uh, especially in this market and economy. So good news there. Uh, quick update, though, on uh, pre-qualification, pre-approval. So let's talk about that. So pre-qualification, uh, it's a term that most people don't use anymore. But truly what it is, is you call your borrower, you call your lender, and you want to go buy a house. Uh, haven't provided any supporting documentation uh, supporting your claims that you're giving uh, to your lender. So for example, if you give me your income, you give me your employment history, you give me your assets, you give me all this fun stuff, but you have yet to submit any kind of documentation to support such, that is classified as a pre-qualification, right? So based off your credit score and what you told us, you can go shopping. Um, those are good for about 30 days, okay? Uh, again, not highly encouraged to use those. Hell, I've heard of lenders not even pulling credit in issuing these. That's a scary thought. Uh, but a credit pull is always required on these uh, on the prequel. So it's a pretty good idea. So as long as that information is accurate, they're about as good. Pre-approval. So there's some limitations on this. Okay, time frames. Uh, once you go through this process, that is the same process as the pre-qualification, but you're saying, hey, here you go, take a look at my bank statements. Go ahead and take a look at my pay stubs, tax returns, whatever it might be, uh, and just kind of confirm what I told you was accurate, like my hourly wage, how many hours I get per week, whatever the case is, and just make sure we don't have any issues. Uh, so we do that. We issue pre-approval letters. Now, you got to remember, guys, things do change. It does happen, okay? Uh, you know, especially in this type of a market, uh, we are in a blue-collar area, right? Right. Very heavy manufacturing, and a lot of it is correlated to the um, car industry. And they're going through a rough patch at the moment. Um, so we are seeing a lot of local employers that are parts supply, or parts providers and, th and things of that nature that uh, are cutting some hours, okay? So, yes, traditionally that bar would be getting 40 hours, and, and a lot of times we're having these conversations like, Phew, I work overtime every week, at least 10 hours or 5 hours, whatever it is. Um, but we usually qualify off your off your base anyways. But we get the information, and at that time they are working forty hours. But you know, sixty days later, thirty days later, what what have you, right? While they're shopping for this house, there are no pay, no um, no pay, no penalties. There are thirty six hour work weeks, or they're cutting down to thirty two hours work weeks because they're behind on parts. This type of stuff can have an impact on your ability to purchase. All right, so make sure you are keeping your lender up to date on pay stubs, hour changes, things of that nature. That, that's very, very important. Um, you know, we can, we can run into these issues that are outside of our realm of control, and we do our best to battle them, of course, um, and, and try to get those fixed. But just know that just because someone issues you a pre-approval letter, if you are 60 days out, 90 days out, whatever it is, um, things can change in the market, and we want to make sure that uh, we're not going to have any issues on a transaction if you get into contract. Same thing goes with bank statements. Uh, you know, with bank statements, we'll validate uh, assets, but they run into a, rep a car repair and they spend $2,000 or they went out and spent a bunch of money. We see it all the time, especially in the upcoming tax season that we're going to have in the next two months. Um, we rely a lot of times on, hey, I file my taxes. Here it is. I'm getting five grand back. This is going to be my down payment. And as soon as they get it, man, that money just disappears. So uh, guys, make sure 
that you hang on to that stuff. You keep the money in the bank. You're not spending your down payment monies uh, while you're shopping for a house. If something pops up and changes, please inform your lender so they can make adjustments and they can recoach you on what needs to be done. Uh, and I, I can't can't hammer that home enough. Um, since we are approaching the tax uh, season, you guys are going to get a tax return, hopefully. Um, remember to keep those monies in the bank account. Okay, don't withdraw it in cash and, and use uh, put it as mattress money. So we we don't want to we don't want to try to document that. That's that's very very difficult. So those are the main differences between pre-qual, pre-approval. Ninety uh, percent of the time, we are doing pre-approval, right? Documenting uh, what they are giving us or what they're telling us, and running those findings through whatever agency that we're running them through to consider the, or to make sure that we're getting an approval. Uh, so I wanted to hammer on that a little bit, guys. Uh, there's so much more in detail that we can go into, and I actually plan on having a guest to dive into some of the shortfalls that we see, uh, and or I'm sorry, pitfalls that we see uh, when this does occur. And uh, we'll get you some more information on that. But that's it. That's all I got for you this week, guys. Uh, stay, uh, stay safe. Stay warm. It's getting colder outside. Have a great holiday season if you don't watch another video for the rest of December. And we'll see you guys next week on the Mortgage Guy Podcast. But remember, subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And we'll catch you later.